Hello everyone, we are here again in Earth and Life Science. Our topic for today is all about coastal processes and its effects. Objectives At the end of our report you will be able to Know the difference of erosion and accretion Distinguish the different types of coastal hazards And differentiate mitigation and adaptation what is coastal processes? When we say coastal processes, it is all about waves, tides, nearshore currents, shoreline weathering, coastal erosion, and many more. What are the effects of coastal processes? Some of its effects would be loss of habitat, beach, landscape quality, buildings, and infrastructure facilities such as roads and power lines. Coastal landforms are created by a wide variety of coastal processes. There are two major processes which are erosion and accretion. What is erosion? Erosion is defined as the group of processes whereby debris or rock material is loosened and dissolved. Coastal erosion is caused by destructive waves wearing away the coast. It continues to produce considerable property damage that requires human adjustment. The second major process is accretion. Accretion is the gradual increase in the area in of land as a result of sedimentation. Here is a video showing the difference between erosion and accretion. Erosion and accretion. Beaches change their form constantly due to wave action, currents and tides. Human activities also contribute significantly to these changes. The combination of these factors cause erosion or accretion. Erosion occurs when the beach loses sand or other sediments, diminishing its size. Accretion occurs when sand or other materials are added to the beach, therefore it increases in size. Types of Coastal Hazards Waves are generated by offshore winds sometimes thousands of kilometers from where the waves reach the shoreline. The other types of waves are hazardous caused by underwater disturbances that displace large amount of water quickly such as earthquakes, landslides, or volcanic eruptions. These very long waves are called tsunamis. This next type of waves has a similar to tsunami. Rogue waves, gigantic and extremely dangerous waves, as waves move away from their point of origin, they sort themselves into a set of similarly sized waves. Occasionally, a rogue wave will appear that is much larger than the rest. Rogue waves can strike the shore and somewhere in the open ocean. These types of waves may reach a height of 100 feet. And according to Wikipedia, rogue waves are unusually unpredictable and suddenly appearing surface waves that can be extremely dangerous to ships, even to, to large ones. They are distinct from tsunamis, which are caused by the displacement of water due to the other phenomena and are often almost unnoticeable in deep waters. This is the example of rogue waves. Sea level change. The change in sea level is caused by a number of processes. Some operate locally and other affects all world's ocean. And there are different types of sea level change. The static sea level, also known as global sea level, is controlled by processes that affect the overall volume of water in the ocean and the shape of the ocean basin. Eustatic sea level are decades increase hazard from storm surge and coastal erosion. This increase because the higher sea level can pose more water inland during 
you can relate it from search and it's also increased coastal erosion because the global warming causes sea level rises as ocean expand and makes storm pattern more energetic consequently it will affect most of the world world coastlines thought inundation and increase erosion relative sea level the position the position of the sea at the shore which is influenced by both the movement of the land and the movement of the water rapid change in relative sea level contribute in coastal plotting and hazardous near shore currents it's contribute coastal Flooding and hazardous hazardous near shore current. It's because when the sea level rise as rapidly as they have been, even a small increase can have devastating effect on coastal habitat farther inland. It can cause destructive erosion, wetland flooding, and aquifer aquifer and agricultural soil contamination with salt and loss habitat for fish bird and plants storm surge is the local rise of sea level that results primarily from water that is pushed toward the shore by wind that swirls around a storm two mechanisms that cause the storm surge during an intense cyclones are one stress exerted by wind on the water surface two low atmospheric pressure in the storm that sucks up the sea surface. A storm surge is not an advancing wall of water as movies interpret it. Instead, it is a continual increase in sea level as storms approaches landfall. Storm surge is the abnormal rise in sea water level during a storm measured as the height of the water above the normal predicted astronomical tide. The surge is caused primarily by a storm's wind pushing water on shore. A storm surge, storm flood, tidal surge, or storm tide is a coastal flood or tsunami-like phenomenon of rising water commonly associated with low-pressure weather system, such as cyclones. It is measured as the rise in water level above the normal tidal level, and does not include waves. Salt water intrusion is the movement of saline water into freshwater aquifers, which can lead to groundwater quality degradation, including drinking water sources. And other consequences, salt water intrusion can naturally occur in coastal aquifers owing to the hydraulic connection between groundwater and seawater. The importance of the groundwater for us is a very important natural resource and has a significant role in the economy. It is the main source of the water for irrigation and, fo and food industry. Groundwater is the water present beneath Earth's surface in soil poor spaces and in the factors of rock and formations. A unit of rock or an unconsolidated deposit is a cold and aquifer when it can yield a usable quantity of water. Groundwater, the water beneath the surface of the ground, consisting largely of surface water that has seeped down the source of the water in spring and wells. Aquifer is an underground layer of water bearing permeable rock, rock fractures, or a consolidated materials. Groundwater can be extracted using a water well. The study of water flow and aquifer and characterization of aquifers is called hydrogeology. Aquifer is a itong underground layer na ang nilalaman ay tubig na dinadaluyan ng mga balina bato o hindi pinagsasamang materials. 
Ang groundwater ay ito, ito yung kumukuha ng tubig para sa aquifer. Sa pag-aaral ng water flow and aquifer and the characterization of aquifers ay tinatawag na hydrogeology. Ito yung example ng aquifers. Mayroong unconfined aquifers at saka confined aquifers. Ang confined aquifers ay limitado. Di pwedeng lumampas sa confining bed. Hindi tulad ng unconfined aquifer na wala nang limitado. Effects of salt water intrusion. The limited potable drinking water supply in areas affected by salt water intrusion. Salinity in irrigation water can be detrimental to agriculture, reducing yields and killing crops with low tolerance to salt water intrusion affect the environment. Salt water intrusion can result in the need for water utilities to increase treatment, reallocate water intakes or development of alternate sources of fresh water. Salt water intrusion and why is it a problem? Salt water intrusion, the technical name for the problem, occurs when too much groundwater is pumped from coastal aquifers, thereby upsetting the subterranean balance between inland freshwater and the relentless ocean. Salt water intrusion, negative impact of ecosystem. Because of salt water intrusion, coastal agriculture would suffer a loss of productivity and may become impossible. Coastal wetlands provide many services. They are habitat for fish, also a nursery. Relocating people from coastal erosion and storm surge prone areas could be a government initiative or initiative by the residents of storm surge prone areas. Why do people relocate move? First, loss of job. Second, lack of opportunity. Third, overcrowding. Fourth, famine. And last is war. Mitigation and Adaptation Evacuation Plans and Shelters Whereas, most governmental agencies, planners, and policymakers have an adequate perception and understanding of storm surges many individuals do not. The public knowledge of storm surges and willingness to accept adjustments caused by the hazard are highly variable. Relocating people from coastal erosion and storm surge-prone areas could be a government initiative or initiative by the residents of storm surge prone areas. Education. This is the most important component of preparedness at the community level. This educational effort could include the public distribution of pamphlets and videos, workshops and trainings for the engineers, architects, and the people of the community and the availability of information on the internet. Education appropriately conceived can be a powerful tool in enabling effective adoption. Prevention and control of salt water intrusion. Reducing pumping or using timeshare pumping from a number of wells, relocating wells, or redesign the well field. To prevent salt water intrusion, some of the rules for well operation should be followed. Reduce water use. Reduce pump depth. Pump less water more frequently. Less, coordinate the pumping in a multi-well system so it is not simultaneous. If the water is pumping saline water due to the salt water intrusion, stop using it for a period of time in which it can possibly recover. However, the damage to the water well may be irreversible. The wheel withdraws groundwater very fast, replaced by salt water due to pressure differences. If it continues, the wheel will be filled with salt water rather than fresh water. That's all for today. Thanks for attending.